I so people have been telling me to check out Trump's press secretary, and her name is Kylie. And if I'm talking funny, it's because my throat has been feeling some type of way for the last few days. Um, I haven't been doing a whole lot on camera because of that. This is Outnumbered. Hello, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno, here with my co-hosts, Kaylee McEnany and Harris Falker. McEnany. Also joining us today, Morgan Ortegas and Jimmy Fela. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jimmy, you messed it up, bro. We got all these beautiful women, and they, they, you pop up on the screen. We got three beautiful women that I thought I was going to be treated with. Nothing but the beauty of the ladies. Oh, yeah. And then you pop up on the daggone screen. Now, breaking new developments in the deadly Uvalde school shooting. The Texas Public Safety Director testifying just a short time ago that law enforcement had enough officers on the scene to have stopped the gunman three minutes after he entered the building and calling the law enforcement response, quote, an abject failure. The stunning new details come as we get the first chilling images from inside the school that day. This surveillance photo you're looking at shows cops with rifles and ballistics shields in the hallway, but they waited another hour to storm the classroom. This Why? photo was taken at the same See, that's the thing right there that I don't understand. And I'm not, I've never been a police officer. I've never been in the military. So I'm not going to jump ahead of myself. I don't know what the protocol is. But come on, man. Like I said before, when there's children in there, listen, we going in there yelling like they do on the movies. Like we just going in there looking for that guy like i ain't gonna be too many people up in there like the dude is already doing so much damage anyway same time but now you see it's a different angle and it also highlights that officers were ready to go in but didn't and at the end of those 77 minutes 19 students including the daughter of one of the officers stationed there in the hallway and two teachers were dead or dying Others sustained serious physical injuries. The emotional and psychological harm will be lifelong for survivors and their families. It was the deadliest school shooting in Texas history. Jimmy, in stark contrast to those officers that waited over 90 minutes until he was actually sh shot, when SWAT came, mm -hmm. there was four minutes mm -hmm. in between them arriving and him actually being shot dead. Yeah, I think the problem here is there's so many overlapping timelines and variations of this story, but the one common thread is that with children in the classroom, they waited to go in. And there's no parent watching this. There's certainly no parent victimized by this horrible tragedy. That's okay with them waiting to go in. And that's the big issue here. To hear law enforcement outright condemn this as a failure, it hurts me because I know it hurts them too. They didn't want this outcome. And I say this yeah. all the time. I am embarrassingly supportive of police. I would be a cop if they didn't have a thing called a background check. But the fact that they do means I'm here doing what I do. And I have a lot of empathy for everybody involved. But there's just no world where we're okay with children not being the priority. Because when you hear something like, well, we didn't know if it was an active shooter situation, so we stood down for a minute. There's no world where there's kids in a classroom with a man with a gun, and we have like a sliding scale of tolerance. There's no tolerance. They should have been in there, and it hurts me to say that. That's right. And Thank you, brother. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. I'm with you 100%. That's all I want to say is pretty much, yeah. Just to be clear, so the Texas police, they entered the corridors of the school 19 minutes mm -hmm. after the gunman entered the building, and then they entered the actual classroom 58 minutes later. Yes, and Kaylee, right. to Jimmy's question about the, the children in there, we have now transcripts that are quite damning, unfortunately, for that police chief, but we have on there an officer that said, uh, if there's kids in there, we need to go in there. Another responded, whoever's in charge will determine that. Um, it goes on, we'll get into more of that later, but I know you have part of the timeline of the children who were calling 911 themselves from yeah, inside the room. Absolutely, and you've got to wonder who that officer was. Was it the officer whose daughter was in there? I'm sure he was saying, let's go in. You can't imagine being a parent there. But yeah, it's chilling. You know, Emily, I read this one line that stood out to me in this Texas Tribune, um, kind of expose with a lot of new details. By noon, officers had rifles, a hooligan, and at least one ballistic shield, yet made no attempt to enter the classroom for 50 minutes. So that's according to the Texas Tribune by noon. Well, we have this timeline, much of which was read out to us uh, during one of those press conferences by law enforcement. The timeline says this, 12.03, first 911 call from inside the classroom from a girl, it was this one girl, there had been calls prior, who whispers that she's in the room. 
She makes a second call at 1210. The same little girl saying multiple people are dead. She makes a third call at 1213. She called again. She makes a fourth call. The same little girl at 1216 and says eight or nine students are still alive. Imagine being this little girl. You've called one time, two time, three time, four time. And then the initial caller who made the first 911 call called at 1236, 1243. She says, please send the police now. Imagine being that little girl who's brave enough to pick up your phone, brave enough to make the call one, two, three, four times. Police, please come. This is a damning timeline. It's catastrophic. It's horrible. It's horrendous. And them waiting in the hallway, waiting for the right time to go. It tells me that these armed, grown ass men, and listen, I love the I love police too because they they protect they protect um, um, good people. That's what they do. They protect good people. Um, I have a great amount of um, respect for them, and I have a bunch of family members, especially in the Philadelphia area, who are um, who are police as well. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't care for police too much. I didn't. I'm gonna be honest with you, because whenever you're on the other side of things, <laughs> you don't care too much about the opposition. Um, but the older I got, when I started getting children, when I started understanding the world more, I started to respect um, police more. But them posturing themselves in the, in, in, the, in the hallways the way that they was, them taking their sweet time to, to take action tells me that their safety was more important than children's safety. And that should never be the case. There's absolutely nothing anyone can say to me about this whole thing that will make me understand why children's safety was not number one priority. Do not tell me that the children's safety was number one priority when they went on to act the way that they acted. Not at all. I'm not buying it. I'm not rolling. I'm not believing it. I don't care how you try to flip it. The children's safety was not their priority at all. And Harris, of course, the investigation is not over, but at the same time, given what we know now, uh, the public is demanding answers, especially the families of those victims. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to wait for all of this to come out, and it won't be easy, the drip drip. Um, there will be stories that coordinate crossing timeline we now know, because 58 minutes is an eternity. Oh so we God. know that we have video of parents being held on the perimeter um, some of them with police acting against them, you know, reports of pepper spray and of, of, of the, the cuffing of parents um, with the plastic strips. Uh, one mom. Oh, so y'all taking action against the parents who, make, who want y'all to hurry your ass up. And they're going crazy outside and you're wondering why y'all calm down, calm down. No, guess what? Here's the thing. Them parents didn't need a gun. They didn't need a knife. They didn't need an ink, plant, an ink pen, a pencil, anything. They would have went in there by themselves for their children. I know it for a fact. I know it for a fact. They don't need all of the shields, all of their guys to be assembled and, and waiting for the word. No, they would have. I know I would have gone in there by my damn self trying to save other people's children. Would I have been a martyr? Probably so. But guess what? The children still have a long life to live. These police, they, they've already lived for 30, 40, 50 years already. I'm not saying that their lives aren't important. I'm just saying that these children should have been priority. I'm, I, okay, I'm not going to continue to say that because clearly y'all know what my stance is. Um, who managed to get away, makes it to the school, gets her kids out. I mean, there was a lot transpiring potentially that'll overlap that timeline. But two words really stand, stood out to me from your setup to this, and it was death, yeah. dying. The death part we know. Were there people who could have been saved? The dying. And listening to that child and what you just recounted too, Kaylee, there's another word that stands out, and that's bravery. We're the home of the brave. Where was the bravery of these men and women standing outside with uniforms? You go toward the gunshots. You do. And if you aren't brave, sit down and let somebody go who is. Mm. 
That's right. And here's uh, Morgan, there were officers that absolutely acted heroically. I think what we're starting to learn from the drip drip, as Harris mentioned, was sort of the the bureaucratic uh, constraints that some fell under. But however, officers who got to the scene immediately evacuate, evacuated children in other class, classrooms when other officers failed to do so. There were officers fighting to go in the classroom. I'm sorry. Do you have to be beautiful in order to be on, be on their show? Because this is... <laughs> uh, listen... Whenever I'm focusing on a topic that's kind of uncomfortable, I start focusing on other things. Um, blame it on the ADHD, which I've never been confirmed to have. <laughs> but um, but I'm just saying, this it's, it's like everyone on the show, for real, everyone. We certainly have yes. the transcripts and testimony um, and witness reports of such. So absolutely, including and especially the bravery of that SWAT team, the Border Patrol SWAT, yes. that resulted in the death of that shooter. So there was, there was, while there's immeasurable tragedy, there is also immeasurable heroism, um, albeit perhaps a bit disproportionate from that day. Morgan. I think that's right. I, I, I keep the, the number that keeps ringing in my ears is when you ladies were talking about at least 50 minutes um, that the parents stood there. Uh, I, I just think about as a parent standing there for 50 minutes, 58 minutes, whatever the timeline ultimately ends up being, and hearing the gunshots and knowing that your child is in there. I, I can't think of anything worse. And, and while we have some really amazing local reporting going on in Texas that's getting this out, the drip drip that Harris is referring to, I also think has to be incredibly psychologically damaging for these parents because every other day you're getting confirmed the, your worst fears possible um, that the people that were supposed to protect your children didn't and so that's why I think we need to keep pushing while the local reporting is fantastic we have to keep pushing for full accountability for a full report so that this never happens again I mean what about again and I don't want to second guess you know the cops until we get that full report but you think about flash grenades or, or the riot gear that the cops have or tear gas some Something, anything to have disabled the shooter instead of it taking only why do people always like to be politically correct i am questioning the cops i apologize no 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 matter of fact i don't apologize i'm questioning them i'm questioning them sorry they don't pass the eye test they're there in their in their gear they're squatted up and they're taking their sweet time so that they can go in there like this is a tactical exercise no people are in there dying get your ass up in there Period. How fast can you get up in there? Come on, man. This this is. Mm. Almost a full hour to disable the shooter, um, and, and so that's the accountability I'd like to see. Where is the? When are we going to get the full and comprehensive report? But where is the line? My life for yours. That's right. I mean, I, I don't want to turn it to, yeah, I'm not going to prophesize because that's not my role. The Lord hasn't called me to do that. But I am a witness by trade. And where is that person? There's always one in a disaster and hurricanes, tornadoes. I've, I've covered that person who decides my life for yours, especially for a little one. And if they were arguing about bureaucracy, that to me isn't an argument. Shoot me in the back as I go rescue people. Like, where is that person? Mm -hmm. And maybe they were there in droves and we don't know yet. Maybe that's the drip trip. I wish they'd spill that faster. That's right. Well, the one officer who showed up just really quickly because he had gotten a call from his wife, who was one yeah. of the teachers, who she said she was bleeding out. She thought he was turned away. So he arrives in the hallway, and according to the reporting I was reading the Texas Tribune, he was turned away by others. Yeah, absolutely heartbreaking. And wow, man. Why is he turned <laughs> He was called there by his wife. He was one of the first on the scene. This dude clearly has a gun. Get in there and do your thing. I'm sorry, man. I'm, let me just be quiet because clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. But come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. And, you know, in the, in the, I don't know if it's the manual or the charging papers essentially for law enforcement there, it specifically says if you're not prepared to give your life for others, perhaps yes. this is not the right calling for you. And I think, unfortunately, you know, despite or no matter how much training there is and how much logistics and, and, and factors and assets in the school districts that we have, sometimes you can't test the measure of a human until that moment. Yeah. And that's the most frightening part. All right, man, that was wild. Um, I, I mean, listen, um, I get a bit emotional when it comes to the kids. I do. Um, and I will put my life on the line for children. And everyone says, you wouldn't know unless you was in that situation. Nah, um, I've seen 
I've seen people risk their lives many times for their children or for other people's children, jump in the way of cars, um, stand, in the, stand in front of a daggone bear if their children like uh, I've seen people fight their children away from I mean fight um, like huge animals away from their children um, pick up cars um, when the adrenaline calls for it at the end of the day man we got to try to figure out what's most important and I think that um, that, that the children are are definitely priority when we're talking about um, levels of importance but that's just me though Y'all let me know whatever it is you want me to know in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I'm Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing. Love y'all. And only move because these things started filling up the screen. All right. Love y'all.